Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about the X570 MSI Godlike motherboard. I recently just upgraded to the 3950X. I have a couple of mixed feelings on this motherboard, which is one of the most expensive mainstream motherboards ever. I'm gonna tell you guys a few things that I like about it and a few things that I don't. I originally got it with the 3900X, so I've had it for quite some time. So let's get into it, so that way you're a little bit better informed in case you're looking for this motherboard as well. Let's go. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Thank you for joining me for another video. Subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. What do you think of these ultra expensive mainstream motherboards? When Ryzen 3000 came out with the 3900X, I was very excited and I completely jumped on the bandwagon. I got a 3900X with the MSI X570 godlike motherboard. Now, I had some pretty good experience with an X99 godlike motherboard and I've always liked these sort of crazy, unreasonable expensive motherboards once in a while. Um, one of my favorite of all time is going to be the Asus X299 Rampage 6. These motherboards, they just look so awesome. They generally have a lot of really cool features. So when MSI announced that they're going to have the godlike for the X570, really the first time that these really high-end motherboards are coming out for Ryzen, I was pretty excited, especially considering since the 3900X was already getting such good reviews, 12-core processor, fantastic. So I figured, why not pair it with something that's absolutely unbelievably crazy, like the MSI Godlike. That way I'll be able to take full advantage of what this processor can do, and I'll also have an upgrade path later on. So let's talk about a few things that I like about this motherboard, and a few things that I really didn't like too much about it. So the first thing that I liked about this motherboard, especially on paper, I mean the specs look really good, and it comes fairly fully featured, even though some of those features are going to translate into being an actual accessory. For example, you can fit a lot of NVMe drives on the motherboard itself, but it also comes with a little expander card, basically a PCIe card that you plug in and you can put in an additional two NVMe drives. It also comes with a 10 gigabit network little card that you pop in. Now the Asus X299 Rampage 6 had this built into the motherboard, as does a lot of really high-end motherboards. This one doesn't, but at least you still get it as part of the package because a lot of people using these type of motherboards, not only for gaming, but for content creation. So it's good that they at least include this because if they didn't and all the motherboard had was just the typical Ethernet ports, I don't really think they could sell it at this price. So definitely at least that's in there. So my first impressions of the board were pretty good. I mean, it does have all these little features and that's where we come to sort of our first negative. Even though it does have all these features, you can't necessarily use everything at once. You're going to be sort of limited by the amount of GPUs, even though you technically it looks like you can use four. It's really hard to use four there because of certain power restrictions on that fourth GPU, as well as the way that it splits up the PCIe lanes. You can't treat it exactly like you would a really high-end motherboard like a Threadripper or even one of like maybe the X299 motherboards. It is going to have certain restrictions where, yeah, you can use a lot of these high-end features, but not everything at the same time. Um, so it's a little weird in how it separates all these PCIe lanes. So while it is almost like a little mini Threadripper, especially if you have it paired with like a 39 or 3950X, it does have these little weird quirks and limitations. So that's definitely one thing that I didn't like about it as much. It seemed better on paper than in actual practice. The second thing that I liked about it, and that's going to be just the aesthetic. I really like the design of these X570 motherboards. Um, I really, even though this is going to sound pretty funny, I really like the box that it comes in. It has a little flap that opens with like a, a little window that you can see in. It reminds me of those big expensive Legos that you would get when you were a kid. This is a very funny reason to like a motherboard, but the box is pretty exceptional. I mean, it's definitely one of the best boxes that I've seen for motherboards. It's not a reason to get it, of course. It's just something that I noticed. And on the same token, something a little more serious that I didn't like about the motherboard. Now, I'm not saying the build quality is bad at all. Um, it is, of course, a big motherboard. It's wider than a regular motherboard motherboard. You know, it's fairly heavy. Compared to something like even my Z390 formula motherboard for Asus, it just doesn't feel like it's built as well. The Asus motherboard, even though it's half the price, literally, from when I got it to what this X570 motherboard cost, it feels so much heavier and just weightier. The back has this really cool metal back plate. Um, the MSI Godlike doesn't have that. The MSI Godlike on the motherboard itself seems a little more bare. Um, the RGB, honestly, like really kind of sucks on this motherboard. You have like a little mirror. It just doesn't look that great. Compared to like the Asus X299 Rampage 6, it looks absolutely terrible actually compared to that. 
even the formula motherboard, which is the system that I took the formula out of, my case labs built, that's what I put the X570 in there. The formula motherboard, in my opinion, looks so much better and it's actually built considerably better, which is a little bit disappointing considering the X570 godlike is twice the price. That's not very godlike to me. It seems a lot cheaper and it seems like it's kind of built to the standard of like a three or four hundred dollar motherboard like the Ace and it doesn't even really meet the standard of sort of that formula motherboard. So that build quality is definitely something that irked me a little bit even though the box is really cool. On paper the features look really cool. The build quality was kind of eh, not really as great. I think even the X99 godlike motherboard that I had previously a long time ago that one seemed to be built better than this. So I don't know quite what happened here, uh, but that's definitely one of the points that I was a little bit sour about. It just didn't feel like a high-end motherboard in terms of the physical build quality and feel. And on another positive note, because this motherboard really does have a lot of different features, the ones that you do take advantage of, I mean, they do work pretty well. It is pretty cool to have all these different features. Um, you can definitely stick all those NVMe drives in there. Um, it's definitely like a really nice fully featured motherboard. You can do your 10 gigabit networking. And of course, aside from those features, it does have great VRMs. Um, it's a great overclocking motherboard, even though technically AMD Ryzen, even the 3900 or 3950X, you can overclock them, but there isn't a tremendous amount of headroom but anyway you have a lot of really nice overclocking tools you have of course the power button reset button um, so in that way it's really nicely featured has a very very good vrm the memory support is also excellent if you're planning on overclocking your memory and using really really high speeds so in terms of the performance and overclocking and memory i think this board is very robust it's definitely going to be one of the best x570 boards and on the board you do have that little uh, chipset fan which basically all of the x570 boards have the only one that doesn't is going to be that gigabyte the aorus extreme that has a different sort of heat pipe system but the fan doesn't really bother me that much it only spins on when you first turn on the system so in general the features that this motherboard has definitely pretty good of course you can't use everything at once like i mentioned before you know take up all the pcie lanes you're going to have some limitations there but in terms of overclocking support and just the robustness of the vrms and the actual performance of the motherboard no complaints there i think I think it does perform really well and you know the hardware that's actually on this particular motherboard everything definitely is very high quality even though some of the build quality and the aesthetics aren't the best all of the selection for the components that are actually on this motherboard are pretty high quality the build quality qualm is just more with the general motherboard itself and you know not having a backplate like the formula does um, just a little bit of a comparison like that but overall the performance on this particular motherboard definitely is pretty good and another complaint that I have about this motherboard, and I've had it literally since it was first released and announced. So I went through like all the different BIOS updates. Um, in the beginning, I'll be honest, it was pretty terrible. Um, support wasn't there for a lot of the MSI software. A lot of it is actually kind of important, like that Dragon Center. If you want to be able to control the RGB and the LEDs in your computer, that's the way that you do it. And I remember in the beginning, for a lot of it, that sort of software integration was broken. Um, Mystic Light often wouldn't load up. There were many, many issues. I had a lot of these little minor bugs in the beginning. And while this BIOS updates over time definitely improved, the reliability of the motherboard still over the life of it within the first few months whenever there would be like a new update something else would break with the msi software the msi software was just not a smooth experience at all um, a lot of times not only was it confusing in the way that it worked things just didn't show up um, and this wasn't just with early bios it was really even later on anytime there'd be like a big update something would be a little bit off um, definitely not the experience that i've had on the higher end asus boards generally even the x299 rampage 6 or even that z390 formula the software experience was considerably better um, i try not to use too much of that motherboard software that they have like fan controls and things like that usually i'll use another option like uh like aqua suite you know aqua aero different fan controllers or even the new ek controllers so i'll try to stick away from those but sometimes there's certain software that you just need maybe to control your rgb uh, maybe some type of system information that you can't really get elsewhere and in general i found asus just has the much more polished version of software and anytime there's something that kind of breaks or there's a bug which happens on every single motherboard i'm not just saying the msi one i found that maybe the asus is a little bit faster to fix it and there are less of these issues 
I just figured on a really expensive high-end motherboard like the X570, these issues would be found out and fixed a lot sooner, but it seems like it was always the last one to get these type of updates, um, even when the more mainstream MSI motherboards seem to get a little bit faster fixes on certain things. But it makes sense, they're not going to be as many of these out there, so maybe not as high of a priority, even though they're pretty expensive. But in general, my experience with the MSI software, definitely pretty rocky. When it does work, I mean, mostly it does the job, nothing really to complain about. About. But in general, we did have those issues, so that's something to keep in mind. And recently, I upgraded from the 3900X that was on this motherboard to the 3950X. I'll probably use this system a little more. I was using my other Intel system um, just because I had these little issues with the uh, with the motherboard over time. So hopefully the 3950X kind of breathes some new light into it. But honestly, next time that I go to upgrade, if it's going to be a high-end solution like this, I think I'm going to probably stick with one of the really high-end Asus motherboards. For whatever reason, the build quality on these much more expensive boards just really feel a lot better better. Um, the performance often is a little bit better. Their software updates, their bugs squashed a lot easier, even though um, all motherboards have problems. I just feel like in terms of the build quality and what you're paying for, I feel like the Asus is on a little bit higher level. In fact, when I did the 10900K, I got an Asus Apex motherboard, which is a very special motherboard. But in the future, when I have the option of maybe something like an MSI Godlike or like an Asus Extreme or even like another Asus Formula motherboard, most likely I think I may lean more towards the direction of Asus just because in my experience only many of their motherboards as well as the MSI build quality just seems a little bit better and the features on the motherboard seem to work a little bit better as well. So for now, while the MSI X570 Godlike does have a lot of cool features, some cool aesthetics, I think for the price, it definitely falls short. It feels more like a four or $500 motherboard. Um, for that price, you really want something that's gonna feel ultra premium, gonna be maybe a little bit more reliable, um, a little bit better software support. I think probably where you get that, like I mentioned, are some of these higher end Asus motherboards. So that's my conclusion for now. Um, I'm gonna really use this motherboard once again with the 3950X. Um, if I see any different, if things have drastically improved, I'll definitely do an update video. But that's kind of my impression on on this higher end motherboard just in case you guys are in the market for this or if you're curious how some of these motherboards function it's definitely not all rosy even though you're paying a high price you would think you're going to get perfection you do get a lot of issues as well all right guys hope you enjoyed the video remember to subscribe smash that like button leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys on the next video